good, Columbus. Today's Sunny 95. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 574. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today we're going to bring you part two of my interview with world-renowned dentist, prosthodontist, dental educator, and philanthropist, Dr. Gordon Christensen, by phone from Provo, Utah. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko, and if you would please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com, and we're streaming live on Facebook. Also, I'd like to remind you that in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. If you want to pre-program the phone number into your phone, it's 614-459-9769. It's going to be a true or false question. should be easy, 50-50 toss-up. I bet you can even guess. All right. So let me introduce my guest. Let me just tell you a little bit about him. Dr. Gordon Christensen is founder and chief executive officer of Practical Clinical Courses, PCC for short, chief executive officer of Clinicians Report Foundation, CR for short, and a practicing prosthodontist in Provo, Utah. Dr. Christensen and Dr. Rella Christensen are co-founders of the nonprofit Clinicians Report Foundation, previously named CRA. Currently, Dr. Rella Christensen is the director of the TRAC Research Division of the CR Foundation. Since 1976, they have conducted research in all areas of dentistry and published the findings to the profession in the well-known CRA newsletter, now called Clinician's Report. Dr. Christensen's degrees include DDS from the University of Southern California, Master's of Science in Dentistry in University of Washington, PhD, University of Denver, and two honorary doctorates. Early in his career, he helped initiate the University of Kentucky and University of Colorado Dental Schools and taught at the University of Washington. Currently, he is an adjunct professor at the University of Utah School of Dentistry. He has presented thousands of hours of continuing education globally, made hundreds of educational videos used throughout the world, and published widely. Dr. Gordon Christensen and Dr. Rella Christensen's sons are dentists. William is a prosthodontist, and Michael is a general dentist. Their daughter, Carlene, is an administrator in a biomedical company. He is a member of numerous professional organizations, which, if I mention them all, may take the entire show. So I guess we're going to skip that right now. Suffice it to say, Dr. Gordon Christensen is a rock star in dentistry. There isn't a dentist in the United States that hasn't heard of Dr. Gordon Christensen, and many of us have heard him speak, have uh, listened or viewed his continuing education uh, seminars, uh, have read the clinician's report, which evaluates dental products so that we all, everybody in dentistry, knows Dr. Gordon Christensen and knows of him. We're really, really happy and proud uh, to have him on the show here. So, Dr. Christensen, I want to tell you just how, how happy I am that you're on the show. And, I mean, within the profession of dentistry, just like I said a minute ago, you're a rock star. I mean, you're probably the best-known dentist in the United States and maybe the world. So I'm curious, how did that come to be? Why did you choose to become a dentist? Now, I happen to be a Mormon, and my ecclesiastical leader, so-called bishop, uh, was a dentist. Uh, the Mormon Church has lay ministry, and uh, I've served in that capacity. You generally serve about five years in that. It's about 40 hours a week. I don't wow. know what you're doing. I had to do counseling and uh, marriage counseling and weddings and funerals and, you know, just like a priest or a rabbi or whatever. 
And uh, he was a dentist, and I didn't know anything about it. My dad had a third grade education. My mother had a high school education. So I bumbled along, and uh, it's kind of an interesting story as to how I actually turned into it. I was a Sigma Chi in college, and um, that was good and bad. <laughs> I don't have to drink, so uh, do I. drunken night when uh, I was sitting there with the group, most of whom were stoned, they said, Christensen, this second year in college, what are you going to do? And I said, well, uh, I'm, uh, I'm looking at uh, dental, medical, and engineering. Mm -hmm. I almost went engineering. And they said, well, let's flip a coin. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> We flipped a coin, it came up dentistry, and I thought, is that the big man trying to tell me what to do? And uh, I kept looking at it, looking, looking, and finally just did it. Wow. It's been an unbelievable blessing. Well, that's really cool. Most of my friends who went to medical school, well, oh, they've either retired or died. Mm. Okay, yeah. Some and have gone right out of it and gone into other fields. Right, yeah. I, I've heard of that as well. Just not what they thought it would be, or certainly has changed over the years. Probably not as much fun as it used to be. Yeah. One of, one of my friends went to Harvard. Uh, he was about the only kid I could study with when I was in college. And, and he uh, eventually went to Harvard uh, Medical School as an internist. He got out, practiced in New York for a while. And guess what he's doing? Photography. <laughs> He said he couldn't stand to hear another whining person. <laughs> That's funny. I can't imagine being internal medicine. Yeah, I guess it would kind of get old, wouldn't it? My daughter is a veterinarian internal medicine specialist, but it, in her case, it's the pet, you know, that she just runs tests because the animal can't talk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, if you had a crystal ball and you could look into the future of dentistry, what do you yes. think you would see? Okay, I've uh, had to write things on that fairly often, and uh, I haven't changed a whole lot over the years. I see enormous changes in the administration of dentistry. I see corporate taking over. Right now, as I said, corporate and group are about a uh, little over 50%, but, but corporate is not even 20% of that. They're about 20% and 30% are group. So about 20% of dental offices are corporate. That would be something like Aspen and Comfort and some of those, and then the other 30% are group practices, large groups such as Heartland Dental and Premier Dental and that sort of thing. I, I just talked to a group called the DEO, Dental Entrepreneur Organization. You may know of it. And it was, I don't know what I had there, maybe 500. They were younger, mostly younger dentists who did not want to practice, but they wanted to buy practices and become the leader. Really? That seems like almost a waste of their dental degree, going to dental school for all those years to just lead a practice and not actually practice dentistry, but, oh well, huh, interesting. I, I see that growing, 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 uh, and I think corporate will, will max out, I'm going to guess. Uh, I think we're, uh, we're going to see 70%, I, I'm pretty sure. Well, you think, you think of third party. When it came on, they thought, well, that's just a few dentists. Now I asked Tom Lamoli, one of the experts in third party, what percent of dentists take no third party? Won't take the paperwork, won't do anything. Two percent. I was going to say, what did he say, zero? Two percent. Yeah, and by the way, folks, when he says third party, he means uh, he means insurance companies, yeah. third party payers. So I, I see a lot of third party uh, in there. I see a lot of corporate in there. I, I see the need for heavy duty leadership in the profession. Okay. The ADA certainly is trying, uh, but it's such a big organization, it's hard to make movement. Right. But uh, uh, there are grassroots uh, organizations arising. The, the, there are a couple coming that uh, the, they don't want to in any way be antagonistic to the ADA. They want to be an augmentation to it. But they're promoting private practice. I think there will always be a group who uh, want to have their own office, want to be their own person. And uh, I don't know what percent, but uh, it could be 20 or 30 percent. It's not going to be much more than that, I'm pretty sure. Do you think I, we'll... I see, well, just recently, we made a video, and as you know, I made hundreds of videos. Right. The video that took me quite a while because I had to really research it on 47 technologies. Okay. And I tried to rate them. We did a survey among dentists to see what, which ones they thought were absolutely mandatory and which ones they thought were just fluff. 
And uh, the way I uh, eventually figured out my definition, if a technology replaces a, a total previous procedure like the air rotor did, or like implants did, that's a major mandatory sort of a technology. If it's just another way to do whatever, right. that's highly elective. Of the 47, we only had about 18 of them that were pretty mandatory. And there were even variations of that. The rest were just, well, that'd be nice, but I don't know, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at CIRAC now. We've been one of the instigators of CIRAC 34 years ago. Mm -hmm. So CIRAC is a CAD CAM machine. It stands for Chairside Economical Restoration of Aesthetic Ceramics. And it's one of those things, I call it the same day crown. We can scan your tooth, we can mill the crown, and cement your crown, your permanent crown, right there while you wait. But uh, as a prosthodontist, if I'm doing, uh, well, quite often I'll do 14 crowns in, in, a, in a day of a prep. Right. Try to mill those babies. I'll be there till next Christmas. <laughs> Being there's a whole cult built around it. But it's still not even 10% of the profession, which says something. Wow. When the technology comes on and it wipes out the previous technique, like air rotor, yes. implant, you know it's a mandatory one. When it just kind of goes along and it has a cult following it, it's a fluffy one. Okay. It's not down on Sarac. It's great in, for single grounds and the kind of things that uh, help build a practice, like one-day dentistry. But uh, it's, not, uh, it's never going to replace everything. Now, scanning will eventually. Right. That's taking, instead of taking an impression in the mouth, we use a computer uh, right. camera to scan the teeth. Right. Okay, now, what do you think about the dental therapist model? And let me just explain to the folks listening. The dental therapist model is a situation where, supposedly to uh, help with uh, access to care in rural areas, uh, some states are allowing people to be trained to go out 100 miles away from a dentist and supposedly work alone but somehow be under the direction of a dentist who's not even there and drill teeth and extract teeth. What do you think of that? You know what? Actually, hold your thought. Don't answer yet. I think we'll do that after we come back from the break. What we're going to do now is Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. As you remember at the beginning of the show, I said you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. And all you have to do is call in and give the answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Before we do that, though, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. All right, and today's question is a true or false question. When asked earlier in the show why he became a dentist, Dr. Christensen said that his Sigma Chi fraternity brothers asked him what he was going to be. And he said either an engineer, a doctor, or a dentist. He said he had kind of narrowed it down to engineer. So they flipped a coin, and it came up dentist. So he became a dentist. Is that true, or is that false? All right, the winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. By the way, you don't have to live in town. If you happen to be watching on Facebook, you can call in as well. The number to call is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hi, I'm Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. Look for my smile on the big screen this summer, courtesy of Dr. Kavitko. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Kanitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. And now we have two locations. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Dr. Kavitko, let's go! Yeah! Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have some callers on the line. We flipped the coin and came up one, which would be DJ. DJ, are you there? I am. And do you have the answer to Dr. Kavitko's question? It is true. It is true. Awesome. That's correct. DJ, what do you do for a living? I'm a policeman. Oh, awesome. So you're out working, making sure we're safe. I am working right now, yes. Okay, cool. Cool. How are the roads? <laughs> no, they're not doing too bad. Not too bad. Okay. I got here just fine, but... Uh, Anyway, hey, thanks for what you do. We appreciate your service. Please stay on the line. We want to make sure you get those flowers to, uh, from, from DeSantis Florist, okay? Thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right, so if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. Uh, we are talking by phone with Dr. Gordon Christensen. Um, he is a world-renowned dentist, prosthodontist, dental educator, and philanthropist. Darn that word. <laughs> Dr. Gordon Christensen. Before the break, I asked... Uh, him, his opinion about the dental therapist model, but asked him to hold his thought until after Dr. Kubitko's question of the day. Well, let's, uh, let's name it as they're trying to do. Both Kellogg and Pew right. are really pushing this with, with great gusto because they think we're absolutely the same as our medical colleagues. Okay, so you're talking about the Pew Research Center and the Kellogg Foundation. Both are privately funded kind of think tanks. In fact, I've written to every state, well, I shouldn't say every, everyone I know of that is considering mid-levels. They call them mid-level uh, providers, yes. I have vehemently stated some facts. Uh, you know, they keep claiming uh, the uh, New Zealand dental nurse worked. Well, it did, but it was all government funding. It's not about to happen in the U.S. We, they don't even pay enough government funding for overhead. Right. Uh, they claim the Alaskan thing at the Aleutian Islands. That one worked because nobody nobody was there, period. Okay. <laughs> but then you look at places like Minnesota, where they have quite a few mid-levels. That was the first state to go. And uh, yet the majority of them are in, uh, guess where, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Right. Uh, they're certainly not in areas of need. Right. Um, uh, then let's go back to the veterinary thing. We now have, and I really feel strongly about this, the perfect team. We have specialists, we have generalists, we have hygienists and assistants who can easily be expanded. They're already part of the team with the quarterback. And right. with the quarterback, those two groups can be expanded as far as we want to expand them. They're already there, they're already recognized, they already have boards, they already have educational programs. Uh, and that would be the so-called EFTA. Right. And then we've got front desk people, business people, and then we have distributors. If you take that whole team and try to put that into medicine or veterinary, you can't. Oh. They're fragmented completely. Mm. Uh, the, the, the nurse practitioner often has uh, responsibilities that they do without the physician there, and they have some they don't. You're finding patients who, who will not go to, to them, you know that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're finding the uh, physician's assistant the same way, and those two are kind of fighting one another. Uh, we've already got the perfect team. Why screw it up? We're already number one. Right. I really feel strongly that way. Yeah, I agree. Well said, well said. I really believe that the dental therapist model is a big, big mistake. All right, so let's change gears a little bit. Do you have any explanation as to how dental insurance companies have been able to get away with not having raised the yearly maximum benefit <laughs> for almost 60 years? 
My my brother, who just died last week at 94, oh. Oh, okay. was president of the largest insurance company in the world. When he was in his active years, he had over 20,000 employees. Wow. And uh, he told me 30 years ago, almost a direct quote, insurance will take over all of medicine. <laughs> he was I right. Said, huh? He was How's right. How's that going to happen? We're all individuals. We're all private. You watch. And they did. It was, it was a prophecy. Yeah. They took it over because dentists and physicians, well, you know how you feel when you go home. You're tired. Right. you got a family. You want to be with the family. You don't want to go to some political meeting. You don't want to go to a dental society meeting. Um, in fact, the young dentists aren't even going to those meetings. The older ones still are. Yeah. So the bottom line is we just let it float. We let it cruise. Uh, the leadership, uh, well, just did not awaken until now. And if you take the gross revenue of an American general dentist, I'm not far off in this statement. I've been, it's a couple of years back in the actual data coming from ADA. But we're about, uh, we are at the uh, uh, net revenue of 1997. Wow. That's what it feels There's like. The higher growth. But the net revenue <laughs> has been pared down because of just what we're talking about, third party. They tell you what to do, when to do, if to do, how to do, how much to charge, and so forth. And that has to be changed. Right. It has to be changed. We lost our leadership. And uh, as, a, as a result, well, medicine's dead. Medicine's literally dead. Really? I have many friends who uh, have retired because they're salaries. One of my most close friends is a general surgeon. His salaries went down 50%. Oh, my goodness. And uh, he's now administering a surgery center. He just uh, he got out of the clinical practice. Uh, they've, they've totally lost their leadership. Almost every state now has got a, a hospital or two that have bought all the hospitals. Mm. So they dictate fees they, to, to the so-called providers, which is a word I disdain. Right. Uh, the doctors, they, they tell them uh, what to do, when to do. They tell them when they can take a day off, et cetera, et cetera. We lost our leadership. Well, you and know what else is happening? The, in, the, uh, the drug... stood up and said, this ain't right. I know. We're the doctors. You're the providers of help to us. It's just the reverse in the terminology, in my opinion. Right. You should be providing help to us to treat people. Right. We're not your slaves. You can't take me as I am. Just a little bit I don't know who to be I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea I know you see it too Cause you're too much for me This is Clark Kellogg Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko Aquí en su sesión favorita Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko General dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model, and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Convicto, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? just joining us. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile, episode number 574, and today we are ta talking to the world-renowned dentist, prosthodontist, dental educator, and philanth philanthropist, Dr. Gordon Christensen. Well, you know what else is happening? Uh, 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 drug companies like uh, CVS and Walgreens, they're buying insurance companies. Mm -hmm. It's getting crazy. Yeah, we're seeing uh, a lot of the, the dental things being bought out. Well, we've got, the, that's another challenge in dentistry. We've got uh, major monopolies that are buying out the small companies. I, I don't have to tell you who they are. There, there are three of them, and they own major fragments of the profession. 
And whenever they buy out a small company, you can watch very clearly one of them, which I won't name because I don't need any trouble. Uh, a little uh, diode laser was 2499 It was bought out by uh, one of the major conglomerates. It immediately raised to $5,000 because there's another layer of profit in it. Double. So we're seeing that uh, come on and that, uh, I don't know how Federal Trade Commission has let that happen. It's worrisome to me. Wow. So now, um, just, I'm just curious, do you think dentistry is expensive? Well, is dentistry expensive? Yes. Well, we have the numbers, and uh, patients don't know this, but they probably should, if they're listening to this. Yeah. A typical general dentist grosses somewhere around $800,000 per year. And uh, that astounds a person listening. That's why those dentists are so rich. <laughs> However, they don't realize According to ADA numbers, there's a 71% overhead. That just plus over 500000 to the groups we've been talking about. So that leaves the dentist with around 200000 give or take. Right. Then there's about 40% state and federal tax on that, and if you're religious, another 10%. So the dentist makes a decent income, but does not overwhelm anybody. Uh, yeah, fees are expensive, but where is the money going? <laughs> yeah, it's not going to the dentist. Right, that seventy-one percent going somewhere else. You know where you know where it's going. I do. <laughs> Supplies, lab bill, salaries, rent, mortgage uh, payment. Uh, yeah, salaries. Supplies, as you know, is that they're about six percent of the gross revenue. So if it's eight hundred thousand, you can see that six percent of that's a major chunk. Yep, six percent of. $800,000 is $48,000. Uh, and uh, dental suppliers are really learning rapidly that uh, the corporates want a 25% reduction, and they're getting it. Uh, so 25% is hacked off that 6%. Uh, and if you're a small practice in a small town and you've got corporates right there competing with you, They've got the reduction, you haven't, Yeah. and uh, therefore uh, that's starting uh, to form these dental cooperatives. The dental cooperative then uh, negotiates with the distributors, and they can get discounts, but it takes a game together. It can't happen with one person very well. Right, right. Things are high, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, it's not going to the dentist, most of it. Right. So, Dr. Christensen, it looks like I'm just about out of time, so we're going to have to leave it here. I do want to see if we can have you back for a future episode because I know there are so many more questions that I have. So I want to thank you for being my guest. So I really... It's a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, really appreciate your time. I, more than you realize, I no, absolutely you. do. Keep up the good work. We need more and more things just like you're doing. I really mean that. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, you have a great day. and um, You too. See you again when I'm in Ohio. That's all the time we have. That's all the time we have today. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Dr. Kavitko and visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmell.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588 or send an email